I'm going to speak to you about exponential decay. I have another science cat for you here with the radioactive cats have 18 half-lives. Ha! So uh, we're going to talk about half-life. It's going to be related, but I mean, first I just want to explain about decay itself. I mean, inside the atom, remember you've got neutrons and protons, and we've got these electrons with this smear of probability going on. But what the atom can do, it can spontaneously decay into something else. But this act of spontaneously decaying, it's exponential. And what that means is that it follows this kind of curve. And remember what an exponential curve looks like. I'll try to draw one here. Maybe I'll do a poor job. Let's just, well, we'll find out pretty soon. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with some amount first. So let's just say something down here. And then I'm going to attempt to go I don't know, something like that. Oops, I didn't do it very well there, but uh, good enough. Actually, I'll do it again. Maybe I can draw it better. Something like that. And the last little bit shouldn't have been quite so raised, but something like this. So if you look at this, then this is the idea is that you either you start off with a certain number of particles, or it could be a mass like in grams or kilograms or whatever, it could be something called activity. And activity is just decays per second. So we use that unit called a Becquerel. So uh, it could be activity, either of these, it goes like this. What that means is that uh, you can actually um, uh, simulate this in a lab, what you can do is you can take a whole bunch of dice, for example, this is something I would do with my students. Let's say you start off with, I don't know, like a hundred dice. Let's just say that'd be crazy, but let's just say a hundred dice and then you just roll them. And what you do is you keep track of uh, each roll, you put that on the x-axis and you keep track of number of dice on the y-axis. What you could do is have a rule like uh, anytime I see sixes, I remove them. So basically, can you imagine your first one, you just count the number of dice as a hundred dice and you roll, Boom, and you get a bunch of sixes, won't you? You'll have some sixes. So every time you have a six, you remove them, and then you plot then the number of dice now. Then you roll again, boom, and you continue this. If you do this, this will give you a nice exponential decay curve. It'll look better than what I've drawn, actually. So this is exponential. What that means, then, is that uh, there exists this word half-life here, and I'm going to show you what that is. Uh, I haven't drawn it very well, but let's just say, let's say you start off here with whatever this is here, uh, 100 particles or 100 grams or 100 becquerels here, because activity. Uh, no matter what we start off with, there exists some half, right? We can get to half of it, so we can go like this right here, go across, and then go down. And this right here, then, will be what we call T1 half. This is the letter we use for half-life, okay? We call it T1 half. That's the half-life. So this is the time it takes to have exactly half of the original amount. That's why it's called half-life. So do you see it's the time it takes to have the activity or mass or number of particles go down to half their original value. And can you see if we go one more half-life? Let's see if that's going to work out. So if I go half of this height now like this, I should go across. And if I've done it right, it should look roughly the same distance here. That's not too bad. So this would be 2 times t one half. So after two half-lives, you have 25% of the original amount remaining. You can go three and four and five and whatever half-lives. This is the idea behind it, okay? It's exponential. Uh, now these right here, you could say that uh, these right here, these little uh, nuclei here, you could be counting what are called the parent. What that means is this is the one that's uh, decaying. We're counting the amount of the what we call the parent. But keep in mind, every time you have a decay happening, you make a new thing. And sometimes those are called daughter nuclei. So I'm going to draw you, just in case you'd like to see it, I'm going to try to draw you the uh, curve of a uh, daughter nuclei. So it's going to go like, I'll just try to draw it like this. Here. It's going to go like this and then like that. So in other words, you start off with no daughters. So this would be called daughter here. So the daughter particles, like whatever it's making, whatever it's turning into, clearly when you have 100% of the parent, then you have no daughters, right? But then as soon as the parents sort of make something new, well, then you have more daughters, if that makes any sense. And of course, at the end, when you have almost no parents left, then you have almost all daughters. And of course, the daughters can't outshine the parents. Uh, I guess they can in real life. But in this case right here, you, then you know what this right here should be asymptotic to. Those are the daughter nuclei. These are the parents. But the key thing, though, is that this right here still is an exponential decay here. That's the key thing to learn. Now, I love this name, half-life. 
Um, maybe you've played, it's an old computer game. There's an old computer game actually called Half-Life that I used to love to play. Actually, it was Half-Life 2 they made. They've been saying they're going to make a Half-Life 3 for like 15 years. But uh, really great game, a little bit scary. I liked it because you actually play a physicist. Uh, that's about where the physics part stops. Although they do use the symbol lambda, which isn't wavelength, actually. It's actually the decay constant. So that's sort of related to a Half-Life. Either way, let's talk about uh, a real example here. We have an isotope. And we're given the fact that it has a half-life of 20 minutes. So now I know T1 half, right away, T1 half equals 20 minutes. Now initially there are 1,024 grams of this isotope. So that means initially now we start off with 1,024 grams. Find the time after which there are 128 grams remaining. Maybe what we can do is consider just look at half-lives and look what happens. So what if, for example, we take this 1024 and we try to maybe split it into two. So this is originally, right? So this is original. And maybe then what we can do, we can actually sort of continue, uh, consider how much is there actually uh, remaining. So watch this. If I take 1024 like this grams and I divide that by two, um, what do I end up with? Well, 1024 divided by 2, it's 512 grams. That's after one half-life, if that makes any sense. That's after one half-life. After another half-life, let's see what we have now. So now we have 512, whoops, I should go like this. I should say 512 grams. That divided by 2, because I have that further divided, uh, that's 256. Maybe you've played that game actually, what's it called actually, 2048? I think it's an app on your um, phone, for example, an iPad or whatever. Uh, that was a game that was popular a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, then you learn your powers of two really well. That's what these are. So you have 256 grams, that's after two half-lives. Is that what I wanted here? Nope. Split that into two again, so 256 divided by two, what do I get? And there I have 128. Hey, do you see how I'm looking for three half-lives, do you see this is what I wanted? I wanted three half-lives. So because I know three half-lives have happened, this is actually really easy. Because I know three half-lives have happened, well, how long is each half-life? It's three times 20 minutes. So then I know it's 60 minutes and that's it. That's your final answer, it's that easy. So this is the case in physics SL, you're expected to do this with nice numbers of half-lives. In other words, you're going to be finding like times that are multiples of the half-life. Um, if you're in HL, then you have an extra topic where you have to learn how to do it when it's not necessarily a nice number. So that's sort of the difference between the HL and the SL part here. It's not that hard. The, the idea is the same. It's just that then we'll get an equation. For the HLs, they'll get an equation for how to solve for T. It'll involve this uh, thing called the decay constant, this lambda. Um, but just so you know, this is how we can deal with this. And it's not so bad, is it? So this is this nuclear physics here. This is exponential decay.